This video talks about the different types of antibodies. Now there are five types of antibodies. IgM, IgA, IgD, IgE, and IgG. Now among the five types, the functions also varies. For example, IgM exists mostly as a pentamer. What does that mean? It means that it has five hands sticking out of it. Something like this. So if you imagine this is one hand, this is two, three, four, and five. So IgM is the only immunoglobulin or only antibody that is going to have five hands. Or it can also be six hands, but that is less common. The next one is IgA. IgA, it's an interesting antibody because it's a monomer in blood, but dimer in secretions. So what is a monomer? Monomer is something like this, antibody which looks like this. So in blood, IgA is going to be a monomer. In secretions, it's going to be a dimer. So this is a dimer. This would be the one side and this would be the other side. So that is IgA. And what do they mean by it's going to be a dimer in secretions? Secretions such as um, milk production, secretions such as mucus in our GI tract, in our respiratory tract, all those surfaces that needs an immune response, a, a defense mechanism in our mucosal surfaces, they're all provided by IgA. So you can imagine how many surfaces needs to be protected. All those surfaces has IgA in them, or else we're going to be infested with bacteria and virus and we would not be able to survive. That's why IgA has such a big amount in our body. This consists about 75% of the, of the antibodies or the immunoglobulins in our entire body. So that's IgA. Again, it's a monomer in blood and dimer in secretions. The next is IgD. IgD is really the least important immunoglobulins among all the five immunoglobulins. It is a surface marker for immature B lymphocytes. It is co-expressed with IgM and it makes about 1% of the proteins in plasma membrane. Only 1% because it only coats those immature B lymphocytes. The next is IgE. IgE, as you all know, is a mediator for type 1 hypersensitivity and it's the least abundant immunoglobulin in our system. IgE has an FC portion which binds to mast cells and basophils and it causes degranulation of mast cells and basophils and all those degranulated substance causes all the reaction that we see in our body. IgE does not fix complement. Now a lot of people get confused with the fact that what does it mean to not fix complement. Complement fixation only means that when a specific antibody binds to an antigen, that is complement fixation. When you look at IgE, does it bind to an antigen? No. It binds to our mast cells and basophils. And those are not antigens. Those are innate in our body. So IgE is the only immunoglobulin that is not going to fix complement. There is one other immunoglobulin, and I will talk about it in a little later, where it also does not fix complement. OK, so the next one is IgG. IgG is produced secondary to the primary immune response but it is also the only immunoglobulin that is produced during a secondary immune response. You're not going to see any other second in our secondary immune, immune response. You're not going to see any other immunoglobulins. Now, IgG has, is the, it's the most powerful. It has a lot of functions that it can do. It can cross placenta. It binds to encapsulated organisms and destroys it in the spleen. It also has memory antibodies that is specifically a function of IgG and these there are different classes of IgG and I did not go into the different classes of IgG. The only one that I want to mention is IgG4. It's the only one that does not fix complement just like IgE. 
it is also responsible for blocking antibodies against an antigen and against an allergen so what does that mean it means that if we have uh, a specific allergen or an antigen which causes a lot of allergy in our body and if it's a secondary immune response IgG is going to go and stop the allergen from gathering in our body and creating a reaction before IgE is notified so that we can avoid all those um, unwanted reaction that we have from IgE binding to mast cell and basophils and degranulating. Now here is a specific example that I have here in order to understand um, the different functions of antibodies or immunoglobulins. But before we move on to that question, let's talk about the structure one more time. IgM is going to be a pentamer. Every immunoglobulin is going to be a monomer like this, except IgA, which is a monomer in blood, and dimer in secretions. Now let's get back to the question. So whenever you're reading the question, I always encourage everyone to read what is asked to you rather than reading the whole vignette so that you have an idea of what the question is. So I'm going to read the question, the real question first. What I mean by that is I'm going to read this part first. It says, which of the following is a property of an antibody visualized under direct immunofluorescence of a skin sample from this patient? So we have to know what antibody th they're talking about and we have to know which function of that antibody matches with the option that is given here. Now let's see what they're talking about. So they're talking about a 66 year old woman who comes to the physician because of itchy blisters on her arms and thighs and silvery plaques on both of her knees. She had a similar episode several years ago. A skin biopsy shows sub-epidermal blistering with eosinophilic infiltrate in the underlying dermis. Now there are a couple of key words that I've highlighted here which is very important. For example, blister. Whenever I think of blister, I think of diseases such as bullous pamphigoid, pamphigus vulgaris, or dermatitis herpetiformis, or Steven Johnson's erythema multiforme. Okay, so those diseases flashes in front of my eyes whenever I see itchy blisters. Now the second thing is I have to see what's the severity of the disease. This patient comes to the physician and not the emergency department and also this is her second episode because she had a similar episode several years ago. So which tells me that the blisters are there but it's not very severe. It's only the second episode and she's 66 years old which makes me want to rule out big diseases such as Steven Johnson's erythema multiforme which is also associated with other diseases. So when I rule them out I think about diseases such as bullous pamphigoid and pamphigus vulgaris. Now I have to determine of those two which one is this particular disease. Now there is a very important keyword that I highlighted here which is sub-epidermal. Sub-epidermal is always bullous pamphigoid because epidermal is intraepidermal is always pamphigus vulgaris. That is the big clue. Another way of remembering is bullous almost sounds like below, so below the dermis. So that's another way of determining which particular um, disease they're talking about. But that is not enough though. We have determined the disease. Now we have to determine what kind of immunoglobulin or what kind of antibody is associated with that disease. We know or we have to just memorize this fact that bullous pamphigoid deals with IgG. Now let's look at the different options that we have here. The first option talks about able to cross placenta. That is IgG. The one that contain delta heavy chain is going to be IgD. When we're talking about secretions as dimer, we're talking about IgA. When we're talking about normally exist as a pentamer, we're talking about IgM. And the last one is interesting. Least common 
immunoglobulin in serum. So this one is going to be IgE. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's say the option was most common immunoglobulin in serum. What would that be? Most common immunoglobulin is going to be IgG. Second most common followed by IgG is going to be IgA. Now even though it's a serum, in serum the most common is obviously going to be IgG. The most common in the mucosal surface is going to be IgA. But even in serum, IgA is the most, second most common immunoglobulin. So there you have it, the different types of immunoglobulins. In this case, the answer is going to be IgG.